to Lessons from the Entrepreneur Now, High Grow Organic Fertilizer based in Roiro, Kiambu County, is a company that used vegetable wastes from markets to produce organic fertilizer used by farmers in tea, coffee and horticulture production. Founder and CEO Richard Mwangi shares the story of an entrepreneurial journey that he says anyone interested in doing can begin since its capital is the readily available kitchen scraps. Here's that story. In tonight's episode of Lessons from the Entrepreneur, we meet Richard Mwangi, the founder and CEO of High Grow Organic Fertilizer based in Ruiru, Kiambu County. Richard takes us through the journey of establishing this unique business that is rivaling the more familiar chemical fertilizers and is popular among tea, coffee and horticultural farmers. Uh, I'm Richard uh, Mwangi, uh, founder and CEO uh, here at uh, Organic Fuels. Uh, Organic Fuels, uh, we started it uh, uh, in the year 2017. Um, and basically what we are trying to see is whether we can make uh, organic fertilizer from food waste. So basically uh, 2017 and 2018 we did not do a lot of uh, production per se uh, because what we are doing is uh, trying to produce a, a fertilizer that can uh, have a positive impact to the farmer and also try to improve the soil health. So we were mostly doing, uh, those two years we were mostly doing research uh, then uh, <clears throat> come 2019, we get we got uh, a lot of uh, positive feedbacks from the farmers on, on our product, and that is when we started uh, production. Though still small, but uh, we were able to move from uh, at least uh, one ton to two tons in a day. So we were able to produce uh, between 40 bags and uh, and 50 bags in a day. And uh, from that, uh, we have uh, <coughs> we have continued to grow because the demand of the fertilizer has been very positive, uh, and also the growth has been also because of the availability of the raw material. One thing is that uh, we are using uh, food waste uh, to do the composting, and uh, food waste is uh, basically increasing the market with the increase in population, and uh, this has given uh, us an impetus to do much of the availability of the raw material but also uh, positive reception of the product by the farmers. So both of them has played a big part, especially reception because these farmers are basically our customers. From its formative years in 2017, using locally available food scraps from the market, Hygro can now produce up to 15 tons of fertilizer per day in a unique system of composting and piling to ensure no wastage is incurred. Uh, both in terms of uh, volume of the waste collected and uh, the fertilizer produced. Uh, in, on, on average, in a day, we are able to produce between uh, 10 tons to 15 tons of fertilizer. And uh, on the other side, we are able to, uh, to collect between 30 tons uh, and 20 tons of waste. So in a day, we reach between 20 tons of waste to 30 tons of waste a day. So you can see we are improving, increasing the amount collected and also the fertilizer are produced. Uh, we are based in uh, Ruiro, uh, uh, Kota area. Uh, basically, we sit in uh, the quarter of an acre. Uh, this is quite now small for us. We are thinking of expanding uh, because the volumes and the demand are, are growing. So in the next uh, few years, we will see how we expand our business. The target market for this product is mostly rural farmers as the organic fertilizer producer struggles for space amid the more familiar chemical fertilizer that the government offers. Uh, basically in uh, rural areas, uh, but uh, we also have urban farmers in urban gardening and uh, they are spread across the uh, tea growing region, coffee growing region, maize and cereals growing region and uh, horticultural crops growing region. So we have a wide range of uh, farmers in different uh, ecological zones. Uh, this fertilizer you apply it in trees, you apply 300 grams uh, per tree. That is coffee, avocado and, uh, and rice. And uh, on vegetables you use only 100 grams. 
for basically this is a fertilizer that has uh, a big future. In fact, it's uh, the fertilizer of the future. Uh, and uh, we expect the demand uh, to grow. But also we expect that uh, in the future the government will be able to put using the subsidy program uh, so that we can uh, be able to reach uh, more farmers. The workload is obviously heavily manual for such a venture. Richard says the agribusiness employs many hands to also help in marketing, distribution and sale of the organic fertilizer to farmers. In terms of uh, <coughs> the employment, we have uh, about uh, between uh, every day we have between uh, 40 and 50 people and mostly around the uh, collection and the production site because the composting site does not require a lot of people. So these people are doing the screening, the sieving, and then the recommendation and the packaging. And uh, uh, this is uh, where we are able to create uh, a lot of jobs for the young people because this uh, is manual work, so it requires uh, uh, people who are energetic enough to be able to do that. Uh, the other big team is in the marketing and basically we have uh, about 18 people uh, in the field. Uh, these are people who do uh, food visit, they are basically agronomists. We either have a diploma or a degree in agriculture and uh, their work is to train the farmers on how to use the organic fertilizer. But there is also we have uh, extended work because we have indirectly uh, employed uh, another about 300 people who do the actual uh, distribution. These are known as village-based agents. So these agents are based in the villages and they are supervised, they are supervised by the field agronomists. So in, uh, in total, we can say we have been able to employ uh, about 75 people uh, direct. And uh, on the other side, we have uh, about 300 people who are in their distribution channel, but uh, not as employees, but as uh, agents of, uh, of this product. As we clamor for soil conservation and protection of the environment, Richard says the fertilizer produced is good for this as it also serves as top dressing for many crops and is a welcome departure from reliance on chemical fertilizer. It is uh, basically uh, a multipurpose uh, fertilizer and when I say it's a multipurpose it is a product that can, uh, a farmer can use during the planting and also a product that a farmer can use uh, during the, uh, the top dressing. Uh, for short period uh, crops, that are uh, crops uh, for three months uh, and grow, we could uh, have uh, uh, potatoes, we could have um, there's some beans, French bean and all that. Uh, this requires to use it, this uh, fertilizer during the planting. So the idea is because it will be able to be taken by the plant uh, uh, very quickly, but also it will be able to support your plant during the growth period. Uh, for farmers bring trees uh, uh, like uh, fruit trees like uh, coffee, mangoes, uh, for candles and the like, uh, this is a fertilizer that we can use for top dressing. And uh, this fertilizer is very best. Uh, most of the Arab bread, uh, Arab soils are basically acidic soils. Uh, say the coffee, uh, the coffee soils, the tea soils, the maize soil. All these soils are most of them uh, come with a low pH. So they are quite or uh, they are bit acidic, and this uh, uh, fertilizer tries to neutralize that uh, acidity. So it is basically one it reduces the need uh, to do rhyming uh, for the uh, farmers. Uh, it in uh, and like rhyme it will add uh, beneficial microbes as we have seen in the uh, seeding process to the soil, and uh, it will have, uh, add carbon or uh, what we call organic matter to the soil. Also, this organic matter is what helps the, in what we call the soil life of the soil barrel to help the soil uh, have a, a better life or a better structure that can support the crops. So basically, uh, this uh, uh, fertilizer has uh, benefits beyond the, uh, feeding the plant. It has a benefit to improvement of the soil or the generation of the soil. Financial institutions have been credited with supporting entrepreneurs to set up and stabilize their businesses. Hygro Organic Fertilizer is a recipient of such initiatives and partnerships and credits the support to the business expansion plans. Uh, again, uh, take us this route of uh, recycling the nutrients. Uh, but behold that, I think the big debate of climate change uh, is that uh, rad fuels and uh, dump sites uh, countrywide or globally uh, contribute uh, to uh, about uh, uh, Thirty percent of the methane produced in the in the in the, in the world, and this methane is a very 
big girls which has uh, damaged the ozone there. And uh, the issue of climate change has come and uh, again it's a real debate which can be addressed by recycling the waste. Uh, where we, uh, we were, I think, in, in the inaugural uh, USPF uh, Standbeak uh, uh, Accelerator Program and uh, basically we won uh, five, uh, 5 million, that is 50,000 US dollars and uh, we have used uh, this grant to one train uh, farmers, we have uh, trained uh, almost 10,000 farmers and this has uh, helped to get a very huge demand or the sustained demand for our product. But it is one of the reasons we have been able to expand rapidly over that period. But behold that, we can see the construction. Uh, you can uh, you see the stage, there is a, you can, I think there is a lot of stage uh, in terms of the machinery, in terms of uh, granulators, all this. And I think this has increased our capacity again to produce. So we have uh, been able to increase one employment of the people that we have. Uh, increase production and also have a, a kind of uh, uh, we are sustainably now producing for the farmers so the farmers can even make their order and uh, rely on us that will be able to supply so uh, I think uh, the grant has uh, uh, also helped us uh, in increasing the capacity think when we got this grant we are got, we're getting like uh, 5 tons of waste in a day now we are 20 tons of waste in a day so it has increased the capacity of waste we are collecting and this again, uh, environmentally, it is uh, improving, uh, making the environment more cleaner. And uh, the amount of waste recycled increases. So we feel that it is a very positive uh, grant uh, to us. It has built our capacity, it has helped us to develop a business plan and all that. And be able now to be what we can call ourselves uh, investor ready. So we are now very ready for investors who can uh, be able to invest in us and uh, expand the business. Richard is encouraging the youth to roll up their sleeve and join such ventures, which he says are quite rewarding. I run from this and uh, be able to adopt uh, this. I think uh, one of the things, uh, one of the resources that is going to increase with the increase in population is the uh, waste. And therefore, the youth have uh, a huge task of see how they can uh, tap into that and create uh, money out of it. Because uh, this waste is basically a resource which can be turned into money. So we would call upon them that uh, they positively uh, uh, engage uh, with uh, this uh, value chain of waste and see how they can uh, make a, a living out of it or an income out of it. For lessons from the entrepreneur, my name is Melissa Odor. Mm -hmm.